This is a very old instrument. This is back 4th century BC. They found the first in China. In English, they call it jaw harp. So you just put it here. So they call it jaw harp. In Persian, they call it zamburak, means little bee. Because the noise that it makes it like bzzz. so that noise they start calling it zambu rak zambu rak and there is variety look like this one and like this one and the most famous rhythm with this zambu rak is here Okay, uh, you cannot do much with this instrument, it's only one rhythm though. Sometimes you mix it with uh, music, I'm gonna play another music uh, and you will hear what effect it makes. But basically, it's a very, very old instrument. <laughs> Now let's watch this video how it's made. The jaw harp and the mouth bow are among the earliest musical instruments. A Chinese drawing from the 4th century BC is believed to be the first record of a musician playing a jaw harp. And cave paintings in southern France from 15,000 BC depict someone playing a mouth bow. The mouth bow is a stick of wood with a single string the musician plucks or strums, while altering the vibration generated sound by mouth. The jaw harp is a metal instrument. The musician plucks its flexible tongue to produce a twanging sound, which he then modulates with mouth positions and breathing. This craftsman makes the jaw harp's frame out of a tenth of an inch thick square steel rod. He measures and marks the required length and bend points. He cuts the length with the standard hacksaw, clamps the rod in a vise, then slips metal pipes over the ends to prevent them from twisting, as he bends them to form the arms of the frame. He aligns the arms, leaving just enough space between them to allow the tongue to vibrate without obstruction. For the instrument to produce quality sound, the arms must be perfectly parallel to each other, their edges in mirror image. He marks the tongue's position in between the arms and files down the metal within the markings. This creates a notch in which the tongue will sit. The tongue is made of spring steel, a type of steel which, when bent, resumes its original shape. Before attaching it, he saws a tiny undercut in each side of the notch. Then he inserts the tongue and hammers the undercut sides to compress them over the tongue and lock it into position. He heats the tip of the tongue with a propane torch. Once the metal softens enough to bend, 
he angles the tip to form what's called the trigger. Then he heats the end of the trigger and bends it into a loop. This is what the musician's finger strikes to make the tongue vibrate. Finally, he files the tongue's edges sharp, a last detail to improve the instrument's sound quality.